check one, two, three. Now the only difference between this video and my last Let's Tear It Apart video is pretty much just how you have to take the motor apart. It's super easy to take one of these things apart. You should know how, so I'm just gonna... Look at all that hair. Yuck. Well, we got this off. Got the nice motor. Now you gotta remove the oscillator knob here. Some oscillation knobs have a screw in here, you can just unscrew and pop that right off. But some you gotta pop open these clips on the bottom of this thing. I do not know how I'm gonna be able to do that. Maybe with this thing loose, it'll help us. So for this kind, you get a flat screwdriver. Some it's got a big enough hole here you can just kind of fish it off of there but this fan is not the case. If you damage the looks a slight bit it's worth it to oil it right? It's not like this is a vintage highly collectible fan anyways it's just a, just a early 90's fan. But yeah. That's what I was talking about. So there, you just pop that right off. Well, remember we took that screw off. There might be a little piece of something covering that on your fan. When you grab a Phillips or whatever these are, which they're usually Phillips. Every fan that I took apart, it's all Phillips. So you first always, um, I like to remove the capacitor just to, so you don't end up pulling on the wires or something when you remove this oscillator part. Always check the wires, make sure they don't crack or stuff when you bend them. This one's actually cracking a bit. This fan must have got hot. That's not too good. Rubber insulation is going on that one. That means it'll be all going. When you take these off, sometimes it'll be good and tight because it kind of heat seals on there. Kind of don't want to mix up your screws, keep them all in separate piles. And you don't want to have to figure out which screw goes where. There will usually always be three screws for the oscillation part. There might be more or less on your fan. There, and that should be just flopping like that. Except I'm going to clean it before I do anything else here. I like to put a little grease in here. Or even just putting some oil in there works too. It seems to stay in there. Now you take the four screws off that hold these covers on. Usually I notice with most fans is they'll have a screw in a nut here that you gotta hold and stuff. But this one doesn't so. I'm gonna have to remember that it's screwed in this way. Because you wouldn't want to try and do it from the other way. Wouldn't matter if you had a screw with a nut on the other end. There's one. There's two. Oh, we got a little thing here. We got a little thing here holding the wire to there. About all you're going to have to do is just. That's what I meant. Okay, now I can proceed. Three. There will usually be lock washers on these screws too. These ones didn't, but if they do, that means you don't tighten the crap out of them. I think these ones can go pretty tight, although it's just white metal, so I wouldn't over tighten them either. I think this fan, it's obvious the rotor comes out the front of the stator to remove this thing. Some fans just have a little piece of tubing, if you may call it, through a little hole in the rotor here. It's not a solid piece, it's just like a flat piece rolled into a tube type of thing. You'll know what I mean when to see your fan, if it has one. And you just pop it out, pop it back in, but this is slightly tougher, you gotta kinda there, that was relatively easy. 
Now I'm gonna clean the bugger out of that. That's gonna be tough. I'm gonna have to sand. Hopefully your fan isn't such a pain. I know this is definitely the most complicated one I've tried to remove. Yep, some fans like this are a big pain. They made them so that you cannot take them apart. But yet, you can. It's just gotta deal with this crap where wires trying to chooch through there and you can't. There you go. That's how you do it. Ha! Huh. Yeah, there we go. Bam! It's tough, but we made her. And now I usually use 3 in 1 oil. You know, either electric motor oil or the detergent kind because it's a sleeve bearing. Soaks up the oil. But I don't have any 3 in 1 oil, so. So this is my oil of choice. Synthetic 040 diesel motor oil to top it off, so it's got detergents in there. Help clean her out. See though, might be too thin. And like we had to on the other fan, this one's got a slight little bit of rust, even though I've never seen weather. It's got some rust right here, so gotta get rid of that. Nice. Yeah, popped right off. Now I'm gonna remove these spacers. This one's got a plastic one, a rubber one. Flexible. And then a great big one. And clean thoroughly. What the heck? I so that was two, my bad. Two of these things. They were stuck together. Perfect. Clean on this side. Same thing. All right, clean out our bearing. Probably hardly see, but there's dirt on there. Remember, be generous. You can't see what I'm doing really, but I'm dipping it in a puddle. I'm letting her soak up as much oil as that cloth will soak up. Don't drop the stator on your fan, because that could result in damage that will permanently kill the fan for good. Looks like I was lucky. Hey, let's get some oil on that baby. Let's let those soak for a good hour or so now. Okay, time for reassembly. Drain out the oil out of these first. Make sure there's no excess oil laying around. Okay, now I think this will be tricky. For me anyways, you, you probably will be able to just slap the stator on and the rotor or the rotor then the stator depends on what side the rotor comes out the stator me I gotta f fish this thing around and make it all fit together and it's gonna be a pain And I'm not tightening these right up. I'm just like screwing them in until they're 
right up against their seated spot like no tightness at all and then go back here that a nice bat. this one up here and this one over here not crazy tight but you know good and firm and that one I tighten them in this order here 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 and here I mean it's not the biggest deal but it just ensures that this thing is tightened on there evenly always do that okay now I'm gonna try it real fast no nope, she lives well here's another different thing about these kind of fans too oh yeah you see that you see this do not push this down when it's off or do not lift it out of there if you had it pushed down while you took this cover off because there will be two little balls in there and you know how if you stop the fan from oscillating when it's in oscillation it'll click well that's just these balls clicking in these grooves here if you can see them there but yeah those little balls in there have a spring in between them and they'll go flying the second you push that out and I've tried to contain it and it's it's hard but it'll work you can but the best thing is to like do it in a glass go like that and cover up the hole at the top there and let them rip that's if you want to take them off though I mean you can just leave them in there all we have to do is set that down and apply a little bit of oil in there some grease would work great but I don't really have any at the moment and oil works good too so I used to just pack those like pretty much completely full of grease, but I find that actually slows the fan down a bit. And I find that the oil doesn't seem to disappear from in there, it always seems to stay in there. So oil works pretty good for that. Sure if you put too much then it pours out of there, but... The amount that I put in there won't be leaking out. Right on. I'm going to put that capacitor on. There we go. And you should tighten the front up before you tighten the back up. Pop your little blade holder clip back on there. Oh, it just takes a little bit. Oh, it's to fly away. This is the best way to do it. There, bang. We're gonna tighten up. There's our oscillation knob here. Now, maybe on your fan you'll have to screw it back in, but if it's the unclipped kind, you just simply. Very simple to put on. And tough to take off.
she is. Well, here we go. Oh, yeah, that's a lot better. Much quieter. Should use the oscillation there and get that oil flowing. how it runs before I oil it. I don't know if it's going to pick up lots of speed or no speed at all, but it'll definitely run quieter than it does right now. Got a nice beat to it. Medium. Bearings definitely need an oiling. Here's high. really seems like this thing could spin faster. Thanks for watching.